Good morning, everybody. Let us do ancient civilization lesson number four, part two. So we finished two civilizations. Now we are going to the third civilization, that is Chinese civilization. The country that lies to the east of India is China, as you all know. The yellow complex Mongolian tribes are the ancestors of these people. Hang Tiz, Shri Karnang and Hang Ho rivers are the prominent rivers of this region. So they are called the cradles of Chinese civilization. Initially they ruled from the villages. Gradually, they developed foreign trade by growing paddy and silk. So as you all know, where is China? It is to the east of India. And here, the yellow complex named Mongolians, they were our, the ancestors, the people who ruled China. This civilization, it flourished on three rivers, that is Hangtis, Sikigang, and Hango. These three are the prominent rivers of this region. So they are called the cradles of Chinese civilization. These Mongolians, they ruled from villages and gradually they developed foreign trade by growing paddy and silk. Let me tell you about their political history. The first ruling family was the Sang dynasty. It ruled in the period between 18th century BC and the 12th century BC. The prosperity of Shang people depended on agriculture. The Chinese had mastered the craft of producing bronze and porcelain dishes. The Shang dynasty was replaced by Zhao dynasty, which ruled for a longer time. Wang was the famous king of Shao dynasty. The well-known philosophers Confucius and Laotius lived in this period. Qin dynasty came to power after Zhao dynasty. The name China is derived from Qin dynasty. Here you know the first ruling family was that is of China was Shang dynasty and this dynasty it ruled from the 18th century BC to the 12th century BC. During this period the Shang dynasty ruled China and the prosperity of the Shang people it depended upon agriculture. Agriculture was their main occupation and they started prospering and progressing because of agriculture. The Chinese had mastered the craft of producing bronze and porcelain dishes. So these people, they practiced other than agriculture, craft and making of porcelain dishes. The Shang dynasty later was replaced by Shao dynasty which ruled for a long time. Wang was the famous king of Shao dynasty. The well-known philosophers Confucius and Laotius lived during this period. The word China is derived from the Qin dynasty and this Qin dynasty came to power after Zhao dynasty. Chu Hang Ti, he was a famous king of Qin dynasty. He was the one who unified China and brought it under uniform law. He is called as the first emperor of China. He built 
1,500 mile long Great Wall of China to protect China from the onslaught of the enemies. China was ruled by Hang Dynasty after Qin Dynasty. This period considered as the golden age in China. So here the famous king of Qin Dynasty was Chu Hang Ti. He was the one who brought or unified it under the uniform law. He was the first emperor of China. He also built a great wall of China that is 1500 miles long because he wanted to protect China from the onslaught of the enemies. Han Dynasty ruled after Qin Dynasty. This period is considered as the golden age in China. Wu Ti. He was the famous king of Han Dynasty who established a vast empire. He also gained importance under his rule for foreign trade. There was a great demand for silk during his time in Rome. As a result, the trade route between China and Rome became famous as the Silk Route. Buddhism entered China during this period. Art and literature received great patronage during the rule of Han Dynasty. Hence, this period is known as the Golden Age in the Chinese history. During the rule of Song Dynasty, which came to power after Hang Dynasty, wood printing press and production of porcelain dishes started. The Mongolians ended the rule of Shang Dynasty by conquering Peking, the capital of Shang Dynasty. Today's Beijing, the capital of China. Here you can see the famous king of Han Dynasty who had established this vast empire that was Huti. He also had gained importance in foreign trade and he also gave a trade route between China and Rome which was called the Silk Route. This period was also in the known as the golden age in the Chinese history because Buddhism entered China during this period. Art and literature received great patronage and so it was called the golden age. During this Shang rule which came to power after Han Dynasty, wood printing press and production of porcelain dishes started during this rule. The Mongolians ended the rule of Shang dynasty by conquering the capital which is known as Peking. Today it is Beijing, the capital of China. Let me tell you about the contributions of Chinese civilization. Chinese civilization flourished in the ancient world was very remarkable. They introduced tea and silk to the world. In addition to this, the inventions like paper made of bamboo, explosives, painting brush, porcelain, and mariner's compass goes to the credit of China. They used pitographic scripture to write. They used to write on bamboo slips vertically from top to bottom. Leotis and Confucius enrich the field of philosophy. Leotis taught simple living, sacrifice and harmonious relationship with nature. Confucius re-established the lost moral and social values in the society. Here the contribution of Chinese was real was really remarkable 
They also introduced tea and silk, paper, printing brushes, rosaline and mariner's compass. So the credit of, for all this goes to the Chinese. The script was, the script which they used to write was pitography. They used to write on bamboo slips and that too vertically, that is from top to bottom. Leotis and Conifacius enriched the field of philosophy and they all, he also taught simple living, sacrifice and harmonious relationship with nature. Conifacius re-established the lost moral and social values in this society. Now let us go to the Harpan civilization. Indian history was studied from the period of Vedas till the last century. Dayaram, Shanhi and Rakaldas Banerji excavated the cities, the sites of Harpa and Mohenjararo in present Pakistan. This discovery at once pushed back the history of India by at least 2000 years earlier to Vedas. It was called the Indus Valley Civilization because some of its important sites which were excavated first are located in the valley of the river Indus and its tributaries. During the research, as many as 1500 cities or sites have been found belonging to this civilization. Hence, it is understood that this civilization was present beyond river Sindhu plains too. So here we study about the period of Vedas till the last century in history and Dayaram, Sanhi and Rakaldas Banerji, they excavated the sites of Harpa and Mohenjadaro. It was called the Indus Valley Civilization because some of its important sites which were excavated first are located in the valley of the river Indus. So during the research, what happened? Nearing 1500 sites have been found belonging to this civilization. Here you can see the map of the Har Harpan civilization. You can see many cities of Harpan civilization have been found. Among these, Harpa and Mohenjadaro in Pakistan, Kalibangan, Rajasthan, Dolavira, Lothal, Gujarat, and Rakigari in Haryana in India are prominent. Refer to the map on page number 82 in your textbooks. Let me continue of the city planning in Harpan civilization. Harpan civilization cities were well planned. They were protected by forts. They had wide roads, public wells, multi-storage buildings and well planned drainage systems these are the important features of the Harpan cities. The drainage system is a great achievement of their ancestors and also cleanliness and public health is a model for the present. This system of town planning cannot be found elsewhere in the ancient civilization. In Mohenjadaro, a great tank for public bath now called the Great Bath was found. There are rooms on all sides, six large granaries and the quarters for laborers are found in the Harpan cities. Lothal was a popular harbor in those days. Here you can see the picture of the Great Bath of Mohenjadaro which is the public bath. Now let us continue with the economic life. The weaving of cotton and woolen clothes were one of their main occupation. 
So here weaving cotton and woolen clothes was the occupation of the Arpan civilization. The production of baked bricks was another occupation. So other than weaving, the other occupation was baked production of baked bricks. They did animal husbandry, cattle, goats, pigs, cats, dogs, camels and donkeys were usually reared. The credit of growing cotton for the first time goes to India. Greeks called it Sidon as it was produced in the Indus Valley. Harpans had trade relationship with Mesopotamians. They called this civilization as Miluha. They carried out trade activities through Lothal port in the Arabian Sea. So here you must know the occupations that is cotton and woolen clothes, weaving of cotton and woolen clothes, also producing baked bricks. They had animal husbandry and the growing of cotton for the first time goes to India. Also they had trade relationship with the Harpans and Mesopotamians. They called this civilization as or by the name Miluha. They carry trade through the port called Lothal in the Arabian Sea. Let me go to social life of the Harpans. Both men and women were found decorating themselves. The women used some ornaments like necklace, fillets, armlets, finger rings, bangles, earrings and nose studs. They were using cosmetics and knew the use of perfumes also. The men were also equally decorating decorated themselves. Their sports were marbles, balls and dice. Bullfighting were their major entertainment. Toys depicting bullock carts were there for the children along with dolls. So their social life was that both men and women they were fond of decorating themselves especially the women with necklaces, armlets, finger rings bangles, earrings and note studs. They were using lots of cosmetics and also perfumes. The men were engaged in their sports such as marbles, balls and dices and bullfighting were their major entertainment. Toy depicting bullock carts were there for the children along with dolls. Let us go to art. Small idols of mother goddess made of clay had been found in large numbers. More than 2000 terracotta shields had been found, a dancing girl's figurine statue and beard man stone idol are the beautiful artifacts that have been found. So their art was a making of idols, seals and uh, the two out of stones and beautiful artifacts were also found in this civilization. Let me go to religion. People worshipped Pashupati, Shiva, Mother Goddess, people and neem trees, sun, fire, earth, water and snakes were also worshipped. Fire pits are found in Kalibangan the, and Lothal which is the proof for fire rituals. So you can see here what all they worshipped. That is Pashupati, Mother Goddess, people and neem trees, sun, fire, earth, water and snakes. Let me go to script Harpan had developed their own unique script and language. The scholars have been trying hard to understand the writings on the seals but in vain. Here you can see the Harpan people. 
their script and language they developed was unique the scholars there were trying very hard to understand the script though they were trying hard but it was all in vain here you can see the image of pashupati shiva bull seal with scripts <coughs> unicorn seal with mythical animal metal idol of dancing girl image of mother goddess sculpture of beard man now we'll go to the decline of the cities the cities of harappan civilization began to disintegrate and gradually <coughs> the entire civilization disappeared there are many causes for its decline so here are some of the following causes the floods at regular intervals in indus and its tributaries made the entire civilization disappear the over use of wood for burning bricks <coughs> that destroyed the forests which necessitated in their migration the aryan who came from outside would have attacked them the spread of infection infectious diseases so these are some of the causes for their decline all the above reasons might have been the cause for the disappearance of the great civilization the historians are of the opinion that the spectacular town planning and also the vision of our ancestors these two are the models to the present here you have some new words used in the lesson civilization which means city life commercial development art of writing use of metals are the features of civilization settlements the dwelling places of our ancient people hum a rounded fleshy mass on the back of an ox or camel example the hump of a camel thank you children thank you for watching please show some love like it share it subscribe it press the bell icon